Hi everyone, Anat Kessler here with a new video tutorial and today we're going to make an art journal page with watercolors. I'm going to show you all you need to know about working with watercolors. It's much easier than you think. Um, what you need are some watercolors and a water brush. Now I have um, this type of water brush which has, which has a container that is full of water but you can also use a regular brush and just dip it in water every now and then. So the first step is to wet your page. The idea um, behind watercolors is that they blend and flow on the page only if you use them with water obviously. So the brush has to be wet and the page itself has to be wet this will give you the full effect that you want of that vibrant color yet a transparent look like you see here. So what we're going to do is start with the background. I'm going to use several colors because I want the background to be colorful. Uh, you can go ahead and use whatever colors that you want. You can create the background with only one color uh, or you can follow my lead and do what I do. Now you can see that the inside of my watercolor palette is a little bit dirty from previous uses, um, but these are blended colors that I've created. And even though they're dry, once you go in there with a wet brush, they come alive and you can reuse them. So only if I don't need them, I take a kitchen towel and or paper towel and then I wipe them out. So watercolors can sometimes be a little bit intimidating, but actually they have a very unjust reputation because they're very forgiving and they're very easy to use. And if you just pick up a wet brush and start playing with the watercolors, you'll see it for yourself how easy and fun it is. So as you can see, I'm continuing with covering the entire page with some colors and you can see that some of the areas of the colors are more dark than the others because the amount of color that I'm picking up with my brush ends at some point and then I need to reload my brush and this creates the variations in the darkness and lightness of the color and that is actually what we want with watercolors because um, this is the way to work with them and they can never be as uh, consistent as f let's say acrylic paints. So once we've done all the background we just go ahead and dry that out and I'm going to paint some to draw sorry to draw some houses some funky houses on my our journal page. Uh, if you don't like houses or you want to draw something else then just go ahead and do that or if you want your houses to be straight and regular then you can go ahead and do that too. Mine are going to be a little bit funky, a little bit uh, swirly and a little bit weird um, because straight houses are a little bit more boring for me. So they're going to have uh, quirky windows and roofs and shapes but this is how I like them so you can draw the same houses as me or different houses or another shape altogether or you can just not draw anything and just follow whatever techniques I'm using with the watercolors that's another option as well so as you can see my houses are almost done and they have all kinds of windows and some of them don't even have doors and now I'm just going to pick up my water brush add some color and paint the houses now the fun part about watercolors is what I've started to explain before is that when you pick up the color with your brush it only goes so far before you need to reload it but if you continue to work with the brush then you can see this change of shades of colors and you can create 
that graduate change of color from dark to light as you see I did in the house and that is a really fun technique to do with um, watercolors it's much more difficult to do it let's say with acrylic paints um, watercolors are simply made for that because of their fluidity because that the water dilutes them and give give them that option to be much more fluid and the paint the color uh, can be used in this way so I like to have a paper towel next to me to clean my brush because I don't want to miss um, all the colors with other colors especially the white although it always cleans up because when you go in with the white with the wet brush it wipes out any colors that you might have on the white but still it's a good thing to have a paper towel close by so I'm using different colors to paint my houses and the windows um, and another thing to know about watercolors is the wetter the brush the lighter the color if you want a darker color then wipe off the water a little bit from your brush and then the color will be much more vibrant and dark and less transparent if you want a very light and transparent color then simply wet your brush a lot and use a lot of water and the pigment in the watercolors uh, is designed exactly for that purpose what I mean is that doesn't matter how much water you add you'll still get a vibrant um, color of course if you're using good water colors uh, as you can see I've just blended blue and white to get sort of a lighter blue and then I'm adding a little bit of green to get a teal color and with this teal color I'm painting the house and I'm going to use this the paint that is on my brush until I have no more paint and then you'll see how the color will go lighter and lighter because there is less color and then you see that effect of the graduate change in the color that I've explained earlier so you can try that it's really cool and like I said before when you're using watercolors uh, they allow you to use lots of water and you should because that's the medium but let's say if you use a lot of water with acrylic paint that makes them very weak and chances are that if you dilute acrylic paints with a lot of water then they'll peel off at some point they won't last but watercolors would so that's the difference five minutes about the difference between watercolors and acrylic paints so going back to our houses I'm blending the colors on the page itself you can blend the colors on your palette or on a plastic plate or on some surface on the side but you can also blend the colors on the page directly watercolors give you that option because as I said before they're very fluid so they blend perfectly together um, so you can create new shades and new paints uh, directly on your page I really like to do that sometimes uh, and it's really fun when you blend you know uh, let's say green and yellow and you get blue or red and white and you get pink etc etc it's really fun to experiment with blending the colors on the page itself while you're you're working um, so I'm just continuing with coloring my houses And then I'm making teal and I'm adding white so I'm getting this color sometimes it's really hard to plan when you blend colors because you don't know exactly what kind of color you're going to get and I really like that um, 
and you get the idea after a while but sometimes you still get surprises and it's really fun when you blend the water colors and that's why I'm not using a huge large you know palette with 50 colors because I kinda like to blend my own colors but if you having problems or you don't want to blend your own colors simply get a larger palette of colors you can get you can buy palettes with 25 20 50 different colors and then you won't have to blend any uh, colors yourself so I'm using different kinds of blues and teals to create clouds I'm simply applying the color in a circular motion on the page and going with some more white and that gives me the look of a cloud so I'm layering the different colors and layering is another thing that you can do with watercolors and all the layers are transparent so sometimes you do layers and then you see the layers underneath and that's really fun and cool and sometimes the colors blend it depends how dry they are if the colors are completely dry then you can build your layers one on top of the other but if you bring another color to on a layer that is still wet then the colors will simply blend together and then you won't see the layers hardly at all so it all depends how dry your color is now I'm going back to my background I want the colors to be a little more vibrant and dark so I'm adding more colors to my background at not all the page but most of it and as you can see I sometimes apply the color horizontally sometimes vertically uh, it actually doesn't really matter because at the end you won't sh you won't show you won't see the brush strokes but sometimes if you need to blend the colors better it helps to work in different directions and remember always to wet your brush at this point where I have stuff where, where I already did some work on my page I don't spray it anymore with water now it's all a matter of keeping my brush wet if I'll go in with a spray now and wet all the page everything will start to run and all my work will be destroyed so now it's a matter of adding the water only where you need it with your brush namely only when you pick up the paint make sure that your brush will be wet and then you can go ahead and apply your paint to the page so now my background looks much better I think and I'm ready to start adding some more funky things uh, if you like the page as it is you can just stop at this point but I'm going uh, ahead with some more colors and adding little circles with my brush um, just to add more of a whimsical funky elements to my page because for me just houses and background and clouds are kinda boring uh, but for you it can be the end of your page and that will be totally fine it's all up to you um, but if you are continuing with me then you can add as many circles as you want with as many colors as you want with different sizes um, and just dry them thoroughly before you move on to the next step because the next step is going in with a black pen and adding all kinds of details first I'm going over all the houses because some of the lines are covered with watercolors and they're a little bit they have a little disappeared so I'm just going over 
the lines with my black pen and now I want to add details so I'm going around the clouds with a black pen and then I'm going to go over all the circles and add little details on them it's again not necessary only if you want to but I want to uh, just circles lines you know the doodling that I love to do you can just see how I do that not a lot of thinking is involved in the stage just just doodling just whatever comes to mind um, no particular order or design just trying to make it interesting by doing each circle a little bit different some are having horizontal lines some diagonal some have dots circles swirls some have combinations you get the idea and I'm not even going to go over all the circles some are going to be left without any details and I'm using uh, watercolor pencils or aquarelle um, these pencils are also water soluble and you can work with them like colored pencil and then go over them with a wet brush and then they will spread and become transparent and it's really really very cool I'm going to work with them as I do with water pencils with sorry with colored pencils but I'm not going to go over them with a wet brush because I don't want the waters to dilute the paint of the pencil so you can do this stage with regular colored pencils as well so I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click on the little bell icon to be notified when I upload a new video. So thank you very much for joining me and I will see you next time.